how do you kind of deal with this proof of work hysteria and like educate people around what proof of work means? Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe a last question that people don't really like to ask. Do you think there's any validity in any of these criticisms and how would you address them? I take, I've always taken it from approach that like we're performing a function and it uses energy. Uh, I mean, uh, I cook, I do, you know, laundry. I do like, like, I don't ever think about that power. I mean, there is from a cost standpoint, we I think about how, how usually energy usage comes into it. First thing is usually like cost, right? It's like, I'm using a lot of energy in my house for whatever reason, not even mining. Right. And you're like, oh, that's expensive. Maybe I should stop turning off lights and stuff. It was never like from an ESG really concerned as much. The waste and all that was usually around like, Am I using too much plastic? Should I not use straws and stuff like that? It was never on the energy use side. It was more on like material use of throwing away things and making sure I'm using less waste than that way. Bitcoin's really brought into this concept of like, we're using too much power. And it's like, wait a minute here. Like power is just a function. It's a thing. Yes, there's coal. Yes, there's different ways to make it. If you think of that kind of environmental thing, it was all about like gas burning cars. It was it was things that were that were related to um, overconsumption use of you know objects, and it's been turned into like just pure energy use issues. And I think you know Nick Carter. I think uh, I, mean, I saw Aubrey from Lolly did a really good piece on um, trying to explain you know how the right incentives are structured in Bitcoin to drive the needle to a more sustainable, cheaper price, um, piece that I think that that conversation to understand the dynamics of building out infrastructure, um, and, uh, newer robust infrastructure that's based on, you know, a renewable thing to where we're not putting, you know, hydrocarbons in the air and all that is a good, I think it's already a natural occurring thing with crypto and Bitcoin that you want to drive to the the most leanest way to do that. And, and including um, the fact that you're not going to put more carbon in the air type of thing. Um, it, I think it gets kind of manipulated because people have tried to fight it in different ways of like, this is going to disrupt the fintech industry or this is, you know, drug dealers use it or whatever else. And now it's kind of pivoted. Like, Oh, let's talk about how much energy it uses. Uh, I think the, the big driver of proof of work in this space right now, especially in the U S from our optics standpoint is the fact because China shut down, we now become a lot more of a participant. If you look at that, that expansive growth that's came to the U S you model that from last year. We just we couldn't become as big of a participant. The things were built in China, and you had buyers right there. And hey, again, it's like water through you know through a crack. They're building Bitmain's building it there. They have buyers there in China. They can put it in a truck and drive it to them. Um, it's a little more complicated to get it through customs and get it through. A, you know, are you going to ship it somewhere? There's some global supply chain issues. Like now that that's a thing, now you have us buying it. Now you have all this talk about all this infrastructure build out and what states and municipalities are going to accept it. Um, I think that's the uh, the signal to noise right now is because the U.S. can become such a big participant in it. Um, you know, Central America is becoming a big participant in it. Um, and you're getting a lot of those kind of discussions and talk. And I think it's good because it lets people understand, like, why proof of work is so such an important thing, you know, and like we just, I was just in Dallas yesterday and we were talking to folks about crypto world, um, you know, cause there's looking, we're looking to expand a lot of different stores and stuff. And we were trying to explain like one of the questions were like, Hey, we understand crypto. We think what's up with the mining, what's with proof of work, what's the innovation, you know, when you literally look at that at the end of the day is that infrastructure play that it has from securing the network that you're taking essentially thermal dynamics and you're transferring into a fact of security that upholds this network. And the only way to then break that immunity is to have more than 51% of that. Right. And it's just, it's such a, uh, a unique way to offset, you know, the trust because you're, you're investing it all your energy into producing things and, you know, that, uh, you know, producing, um, these hashes to make a challenge, you know, the whole game theory of it is very interesting, but like, I think that the, it's going to get louder, um, before it, before people understand, I think it's going to get, it, it, it's going to get very heated. Um, but I think there's a, the right inertia behind States that have already been uh, moving. It's like a rolling wave and we're already past it. It's like, Hey man, it's already on shore. Um, 
And now it's going to be more like, okay, how do we do containment with the places that that are very against it? And then you're going to have hot spots throughout the country, which I think we're already seeing with like Texas, Washington, Wyoming, that are really going to become leaders. And then it's going to hit a point, I believe firmly, that it's going to be considered critical infrastructure. Um, and when it gets that designation um, for a multitude of reasons, and probably the one way that we're not most familiar with um, not being it that it's the monetary, you know, uh, system, but more of this has been responsible for the growth of all this critical infrastructure, like power systems and have more stability there that if we don't have the consumers, like this goes away, it's going to literally become a fabric of, I think the country. And I think other countries are going to see that and want to build up that infrastructure. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that that's going to be, it's, it's driving force is becoming critical infrastructure in the U S and then it'll start to be a, a leader in the, you know, European nations and places that quote unquote have energy crises. Um, they have an energy crisis is because of their politics, right? I mean, they can put nuclear power plants, they can put things that are more innovative. Um, you know, you got tidal, you got wind, you got a lot of things that could drive their infrastructure. So I think we'll be a leader in it. And I, I think the outlook is very good. Um, and if you've been to Texas, if anybody has any opposing opinions, go to Texas for like two minutes and talk <laughs> to somebody in this space. I, I was down there yesterday. It was amazing. Like the energy down in Texas, I get it why you guys have a Austin headquarter now. It is, I thought Miami was like the pinnacle of the space. I mm -hmm. mean, dude, Texas is it right now. So um, yeah, you'll get, you'll get that right energy with people and get the different perspectives from their perspective. Um, but yeah.